Well, hello. It is I, and I am back again. Tiffany Rashawn, head Imaginarian of Imagined. Thank you so much for tuning in. I just did a little snippet for a World Water Day, and I promised that this episode was upcoming, and so here I am. Uh, always, always thank you so much for tuning in. I do appreciate you. You know, Imagined is a multi-dimensional family literacy platform that creates and celebrates diverse reading experiences. We do that by citing socially responsible literature and creating culturally appropriate and authentic literacy development programs from those materials. And so we are happy that we have engaged so many with our literacy programs. Stay tuned for um, details on the class that we have coming up in April that is absolutely free. We're looking for third through fifth graders. So if you know any third through fifth graders who hate to read, love those, love to read, love those too. And anybody in between, we're looking for the best of the best. And we know that that comes in all shapes, sizes, flavors, fun and all. So let us know who might be a good fit for our very first Imagine Reading for Writing Masterclass. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into our feature today. Um, I had to switch it up. I was going to do something a little different, but I have to go back to uh, my one of my first loves by Gladys Elizabeth Barbieri. We are still celebrating worlds, women, and wisdom. And because we are, what... What could I have come up with in terms of wisdom in women and worldly views than by depicting or by featuring a story that actually looks at the way we feel about women doing things that women aren't supposed to do? Jobs and positions and roles. It's, all, it's just all so skewed and so muddled, if you will. You know, women have been over the years told that they can only do certain things, you know. And that's unfair. There's no two, two ways about it. It's unfair. Women are making continuous strides in science and technology these days. And it's something, it's a sight to see for sure, but that's not... That's not any different from how it's always been. You allow a woman to do what she feels inclined to do, and she will do it very, very, very good. And so I was going to feature a different book, but I was like, you know, I did promise my, my viewers that I was going to go back to some of my original loves, and this is definitely, definitely one of my all-time favorite, 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 favorite books. Without further ado, I give you Pink Fire Trucks. Pink Fire Trucks. Now, my students know that um, they've taught me literally like eight words in Spanish. Okay? So I can't tell you what this is. But I can tell you that this is a beautifully written bilingual book that you should own. Cultural authenticity and cultural appropriateness is very important at Imagery. You cannot reach a child with reading and trying to teach them literal concepts if they don't see children that look like them, speak like them, act like them, feel like them. And so I just realized this is my first actual bilingual pick, but Imagery, this is representative of Imagery. We do all kinds of picks and features. And the fact that this one is bilingual is near and dear to our heart. And again, it's Pink Fire Trunks by Gladys. It's written by Gladys Elizabeth by Barry. Now, again, flashback. You can Google Gladys. She's a first grade teacher. She's a yogi. She's, she's, she's further along in her yogi ability than I am. I'm going to yoga today, but Gladys like totally inspires me. I'm not as committed and I will be soon. Um, but she's a yogi. Uh, she's a, she's an educator and she's a phenomenal spirit. She really, really is. I mean, I don't even know how else to describe her. Google her, Gladys Elizabeth Barberi. And this one was illustrated by Lena Safar. I believe Lena illustrated, um, one of my other favorites. 
you have to stay tuned for that. So, as usual, I'm going to go ahead and get into it because I could be talking all day about Gladys and how wonderful she is. But um, I'll go ahead and uh, get this party off right. And so here it is, the first two, maybe three pages of Pink Friday Trucks. Excitement is buzzing in the air of the auditorium. The school principal taps the microphone and says, Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to career day. Such a beautiful book. All sorts of people come to talk about their careers. An attorney, a carpenter, a yoga instructor, and a chiropractor, just to mention a few. Even Millie's dad comes. But instead of talking about being a painter, Mr. Vasquez rambles on and on about other things. Not understanding what Mr. Vasquez is talking about, we laugh so loudly that the principal walks out on stage to remind us to simmer down. I look over at Millie and she, and wonder if she is pretending to be invisible. I'm going to do five pages. My favorite guest is Mrs. Rizzo. A hairstylist from New Jersey. I wonder, can she do something with my not so fabulous bowl cut hairdo? Back in the classroom, the teacher hands us a big piece of white paper and says, draw what you would like to be when you grow up. Enthusiastically, I begin to draw. Now I am gonna do this and I haven't done this. That's it. That's it, you gotta get it, <laughs> you gotta get it. There's so much to explore in this one. I'm going to try because of because of the way the figurative language is presented in this story. I'm going to try my best to do something a tad bit different with the supplement. But this is a gem on so many levels. For the little girl that you know or is in your life that wants to be something. And, and let me say this. Most little girls, most all little girls want to be something. They do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, they need to see examples of girls who say, you know what, I'm going to defy the odds. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, do it, do it. They need to see that. It may be something that they've entertained, but not necessarily put much thought into. This is a read that is going to be timeless and one that you should definitely own. So, like I said, I'm going to do my best because I just, I get all over the place in Pink Fire Trucks because it's such a beautiful book. It's such a beautiful book with the most timeless message. It's so endearing. I mean, you got to read it. And then the comeback, you know, you, you got to read the comeback because you just got to get it. I don't want to spoil it. I will leave your links in, uh, where they normally go <laughs> right under the video so you can download your supplement and grab your copy and of course I'm going to link you to Gladys's blog you want to follow her blog she's in California my dream home I'll be there soon I will and uh, she does incredible things in the community outside of the classroom so she, she's definitely someone you want to follow so I'm gonna link her blog and um, let me know how you like this I'm curious. Like I said, this is my all-time favorite. I love, 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 love. Um, also, a um, Mobile Kit Lit book fair selection. So I actually have copies of this book to sell you if you want to get one from me in person, should you see me soon. So that being said, that's it. I do thank you for tuning in. We have one more, maybe two. I might do something a little special with this book that I just got yesterday. I'm really, really excited about it. We'll see. But we have one more for sure in the world's women in wisdom highlight this month. Maybe too. Thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate your time and your energy, all of your positive feedback. And I do wish you an imaginative day. <laughs>